We're taking on the math of the MCAT by showing you what mathematical manipulations are required and how they're frequently tested. This is just one video of our full MCAT math video series, and today, I'm going to show you how the math of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is tested. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation states that pH is equal to pKa plus the log base over acid. And these up here are concentration values. Remember that equation? I'm going to quiz you on it during this video. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation describes how the acidity of a solution with a certain pKa changes with the addition of a base or an acid. That's a really wordy way of saying we're gonna be looking at buffer solutions. And on the MCAT, this is really frequently tested with the bicarbonate buffer system, which is the buffer system that's in our blood that keeps us from dying. And the MCAT loves to use this topic because first it allows them to test on multiple different sciences, whether that be buffers or hemoglobin, or even they can sneak some amino acids in there. But mainly the reason they like testing this specific equation is because it involves a logarithm. And well, we hate logarithms. So with that overview of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, it's your turn. What is the equation? pH is equal to pKa plus the logarithm of the base over the acid. Now while the log can be a little bit tricky, the hardest part of this equation and these questions in general is usually figuring out which species is the acid and which species is the base. Once you have that figured out, you can just plug it into the equation. And again, what's the equation? pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. Perfect. It's burned into your brain now. So let's look at each of these variables and try to understand them so that regardless how the MCAT phrases them, we'll be able to pick them out of the passage or the question stem and apply them to this specific equation. So when we're referencing the pH, we're talking about the acidity of a solution. Now this is actually kind of a logarithmic measure of the concentration of hydrogen ions, but here we're just gonna say it's a measurement of acidity. The pKa, that is the pH value at which 50% of the species are protonated and 50% are deprotonated. Another great way to memorize what pKa is is by using this mnemonic. Pick a proton off above, meaning whenever your pH exceeds the pKa value, you're going to remove a proton from that species and vice versa, if your pH drops below the pKa of that species, you are going to gain a proton to your molecule. Now, I remember the first time I heard this mnemonic, it was my genetics professor and I really couldn't stand him. And when I first heard it, I was like, that is so dumb. It's not even clever. I don't think you tried very hard. And then it stuck. So give this a shot. If it doesn't work for you, no harm, no foul. And lastly, finishing out this equation, we will touch a little bit later on how to identify which one is the acid and which one is the base because they will not always be labeled like so. Let's take a look at an example question and I will show you how the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is applied. The example question reads like this. A student prepares a buffer by combining aqueous samples of five molar bicarbonate with 50 molar carbonic acid. If the solution has 51% deprotonation at a pH of 7.6 and 49% deprotonation of pH of 7.4, what is the pH of your buffer? So first things first, I recognize that this is asking me about buffers. So what equation am I immediately going to write down? Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is pH is equal to the pKa plus the logarithm of the concentration of base divided by the concentration of acid. Now, just like any math problem, we're going to identify what we have, identify what we are supposed to deduce, and identify the variable that we are solving for. So it tells us that we are looking for pH at the end of the question, says what is the pH? And then it also gives us two species that we're working with and tells us their concentration values. So it gives us bicarbonate and carbonic acid. So the first question is, which one of these is the acid and which one of these is the base? Because once we have that figured out, then we can just plug it into this equation deduce our pKa from the rest of the question, and boom, that'll give us the pH. When you're trying to identify which one's the acid and which one's the base, there are some really sciencey ways to do this, and especially whenever you are comparing species that differ by more than just one proton like these species do here. Typically on the MCAT, they will just differ by one proton. 
it's possible that they give you one species that's a strong acid and the other species you just have to know is not as strong of an acid as a strong acid. But usually on the MCAT, you're going to be dealing with molecules that only differ by one proton. If they only differ by one proton, like in this example, the base is the one that has fewer protons. And you'll notice that even by looking at our generic example of a base, it does not have a proton. And so which one of these has fewer protons? That's going to be bicarbonate. Which one of these has the most protons is going to be carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is going to end up being your acid and bicarbonate is going to end up being your base. So now we have this, we just need pKa. So looking back at our question, what does it tell us? It gives this weird thing at the end. It says the pH is 7.6 at 51% deprotonation and the pH is 7.4 and has 49% deprotonation. Do you remember the definition of pKa? The pH value at which 50% of the species is deprotonated. Well, it seems like a pretty safe assumption if the pH is 7.6 and there's 51% deprotonated and the pH is 7.4 and that yields 49% deprotonated, that if we were to split those differences, we'd probably have a 50% deprotonation. So we're going to go ahead and assume that our pKa has a value of 7.5. So 51% deprotonated, is pH of 7.6, 49% deprotonated is a pH of 7.4, and 50% deprotonated is a pH of 7.5. Now this will not always be how they tell you the pKa. I just wanted to include this example because sometimes they do weird things like this. So now that we have all of our variables, let's plug them into the equation and get the correct answer. pH is equal to our pKa, which we said was 7.5. 7.5 plus the log of our base, which we said was five molars, divided by the log of our acid, which we said is 50 mole. The next step is doing some basic algebra. So 5 over 50 means that we are dealing with 7.5 plus the logarithm of 0.1 because 5 over 50 is the same thing as 1 over 10. Now it's up to you to do some log math. You can do it the long way or you can just have these values memorized. I know that the log of 0.1 is going to be negative 1. So now 7.5 plus negative 1 is my pH and that is 6.5. Now, if you're not sure how to do these logarithms and the math and the algebra are kind of tripping you up, make sure to watch our video titled What Math You Have to Know, where Maggie gives you an excellent overview of all things algebra, math, and logarithms. Lastly, if you're interested in having a guide that explains all these mathematical manipulations, their high yield applications like the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and includes a full equation sheet so that you're not blindsided on test day, check the first link in the description for our complete MCAT math guide. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.